Hey guys, this is Nathan, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Hope you guys are doing good today. I am doing great. So, out exploring down to the southeast of the base, we have this very rocky area down here. We found some more coal down here and a pure sulfur node. Now, I've been trying to get to this sulfur node, and it's up above. I think it's up here, but I saw a crash site over here so I would kind of like to see what we need for that so that we can get that going what is it gonna take to get up there I don't know we've been getting a lot of these plasma spitters around here Ooh, this is a big guy well okay there's a lot of plasma spitters around here though and so what? I, I'm stuck. I'm trying to. I'm trying to move forward. That was weird. You know, granted, I will say this is an early access game still, and so I would not expect it to be perfect. Now this does come out right to the edge of the map. Okay, so that must have been that sulfur that, yep, the impure sulfur that I had show up on the scanner. Well, just a lot of general exploring to try to get up here to this thing. There it is. It's up there. How do we get to it? So, let's see. If we, if we come around this way, can we get up there? How are we supposed to get up there? Jeez. And I definitely hear a spitter around here somewhere. Where he is, no clue. Definitely getting closer to it, and we might have to just make some. Ah! Bad time for an autosave. We might just have to make some foundations to get up there. Oh well. Well, I'm going to see if I can get up there. And I'll see you guys in a bit. And he's spitting at us now. Where is he? Got to be around here somewhere. Well, there's the sulfur. Ah! Well, <clears throat> had to build my way up here. I did not see any other way to get up here. And I still don't see any other way to get up here. But this is unguarded, which makes me think that it's going to be really expensive. Heat sinks. Really? I had room for two screws. Wow. We might have to uh, go drop off some stuff. But then this, okay. We need 35 motors for this thing. We have computers here. Super computers. Five super computers and 17 regular computers. Good lord. All right, well, I think we are going to place down a personal storage chest here, or personal storage crate. We're going to drop off this stuff that I, I really don't care terribly much about, because these, good lord, that is well worth it. Now, one thing that I could do here, I could... Go ahead and set up to craft the items that we need right here. Because we do have everything that we need. So, actually, let's just make sure that we can do that. Because I know that we have what we need to make uh, stators. And we I think we have rotors on us. If not, we have screws and rods. Um, we do not have rotors. But we do have the ability to make the stators. 
but we need 35 motors. What's the recipe on those? So we need 70 staters. So yeah, looks like I'm going to have to head back to the base. What do we got? Heat sinks. What on earth even are those? I don't know. Well, I guess I will head back to the base. It's not terribly far away. I mean, it's just right over there. I have not really explored into this area very much. So there's a slug over there. I saw another slug that I didn't pick up, like down over in here. So yeah, there's definitely some stuff that we want to explore here, but there's some much more pressing issues back at the base too. So before we head back out to get our hard drive, I did want to show you guys what our problem is here at the base, and that is power spikes going up into our biomass burners. So yes, we are definitely running low on power reserves. Now we could very easily set up a few of the uh, energy storage so if we look here, we do have the power storage. Now these do require rotors, unfortunately. So we would have to make a bunch of those. But that would definitely even out the ability to handle the power spikes when they happen. And that may be the simplest solution here because there are times that we are well below. And the only reason we are above at the moment is the fact that our steel production is currently active because I had to grab a bunch of steel pipes to make the rotors and while I was at it I decided to grab some of the steel beams as well but uh, yeah that's that's a bit of a problem that we are dipping into our reserve power so I want to get that taken care of so we'll get back out here and get our hard drive Get that set in the ma'am, see what we get for the recipe on that, and like I said, I think we will be making the we will be making the power storage at least as an interim solution so that we can get more power generators. I have pulled a hundred megawatts off of our power grid for usage by turning these two assemblers off and still at that we are barely getting any charge. We're charging at like 14 megawatts. Oh, that, everything finally started dropping down. Now we've got about six hours, six and a half, seven, eight hours somewhere in there until this is fully charged. I do have a fair number of these. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. So yeah, that's kind of nice. But it does look like our recipe is done in the, or our hard drive is done in the ma'am. So let's see what we get for a new recipe. Cheap silica. Interesting. Bolted iron plates, I've heard people say that bolted iron plates are kind of garbage. Now the stitched iron plates, on the other hand, is kind of a nice one if you ask me, because that gives a use for our copper, which I know later on we will want to have a lot of copper for some of the electronics and things like that. But. I mean, honestly, I, I kind of feel like this is the way to go. We get a slightly higher production and considerably less iron input. Now, I know iron is not very scarce, especially out here in the dune desert, but slightly higher uh, speed of production and the ability to use other materials I don't know the bolted iron plates you know we're, we're not really too much better on this so it actually uses more screws and everything else is the same but it does greatly increase the speed I mean tripling the speed is a big deal now one nice thing the screws 
at 50 per recipe that's what does it need 150 per minute here then because it's gonna do no it, it needs 250 bolts or screws per minute Ooh. I mean both of these I feel like the stitched iron plates is still a better option I mean, yeah, we're gonna go with the stitched iron plates. Probably the wrong thing to choose. I don't know. But yes, we will be letting our power system charge up here for a little while. It is kind of nice to have a little bit of reserve here. Looks like we used about 10 bio fuel in each of those while we were waiting but this is slowly i mean slowly going to charge up in the meantime i'm going to start looking into what we can do here with our generator situation so i guess i will get on this see what we want to do here and i'll be back Well, a little bit of progress here. So, I don't know what I think of this building. Obviously, it's in the middle of being built. But we have a very large logistics floor underneath that will allow us to have all of our water lines and uh, intermediate pumps and all of that in here. And then we have all of our conveyor lift floor holes coming through here as well but that also means that probably like through this wall right here we would have to have our conveyor belt inputs now we are able with the length of this building to get 10 power generators now the length of the build or the width of the building allows us to put two of them back to back so it could either be back to back or we could have staggered pillars so or smokestacks i don't know which i want to do but uh 20 generators should handle things for a while and that would also allow us to pull all of this down the only thing is is 20 generators is also going to take something in the order of well a, a fair amount if we'd be looking at around eight of these water pumps to do that that sounds like a logistical nightmare but yeah i mean there's a lot to do here getting these borders along the edge of the roofs is absolutely horrible and i'd keep doing that too so yeah not real fun on that but yeah, I mean, it's not bad, it's just, I, I don't know. I don't know if I like it too much. Part of it could be the proximity to the uh, tree here. I don't know what, something just doesn't feel right to me about it. But, uh, yeah, I'm just going to keep going on it. We've got to get our power sorted out. Now, here is an interesting quirk to building. If I go ahead and select this wall with the pick tool and place it down, it will not carry with it the color information. So that is rather an interesting thing. We can see this one is dark and this one is light. But strangely enough, if we select this window and then shift replace it, No? Okay, I don't know what's going on with that then. I was able to get them to carry some color material with, or color information with them. And maybe it's just that it maintains the color information that was already there? I 
don't know for sure. But yes, I'm starting on the second row of generators now. I did have to extend the building by two more foundations. So that's a bit unfortunate because the base starts to disappear into the dunes then. So I think what we're going to do down below, we are going to have just these two sets of windows like I had originally, and we are going to bring the wall all the way across here. But the only reason that I am saying that we can do that is we're going to have to put in some support pillars along the outer edge. And I think that makes it look a little more interesting. There is no reason for the bottom of the uh, power plant to be as wide as the top. And that allows us to get our full 20 power generators in here. So I think that's the other thing you can see I did set up to where we will have staggered rather than having on opposite ends of the power plant for the chimneys. So we've gone up two roofs here. That's enough to clear the, well, actually one is enough to clear the power plant, but this is perfect because we can walk underneath it. And then we're going to go out flat for a little bit and then drop back down, I think. I think we have enough room to do that. But uh, I'll have to experiment with that a little bit. I'd like to be able to drop back down to the same level that this is and be able to set up the same thing. I don't know that I'm going to be able to. But I just found that kind of weird that it was carrying the color information when I was replacing it sometimes and not others. I, I don't, I don't understand. But yeah, I suppose I'm going to keep placing these in. Now we are packing them in tight, just like we did originally. So we've got the two, two space overlap. And uh, so that does make our power plants one foundation wide so this building is 11 foundations long but we can fit 10 in here oh we are missing cables we can fit 10 in here because I am pulling it back away from the edge a little bit and that's so that we can walk around a little easier of course you can see I've got all of the piping and everything hooked up up here on the power floor and also I went ahead and put these pillars or these uh, beams in between just makes it feel a little bit more secure and supported I don't know it I know it's not necessary but it looks pretty cool so yeah get some more stuff continue building well let me tell you working with these angles not real fun, but I have learned a lot about what I need to do to make all of this work. So I will show you guys how to put a border like this onto one of these sloped roofs. So we'll go to the other side over here and we'll go through the process. I have a little sip of her coffee while we're going because why not? I mean, coffee. So the first thing that we're going to want to do here, and I'll probably be reviewing some of this other stuff as well. But the first thing that we are going to want to do is obviously extend the roof all the way out. So let's go ahead and get these in there. All right, so we're going to want to give ourselves a little bit of a platform to work on. So we'll go ahead and grab a foundation, bring it up here, and hopefully we can get it to snap onto something here. Yeah, whatever. As long as we've got somewhere to work from, that's the main thing. So, in all actuality, we can bring it in there. We're going to be entirely outside of all of that. So, what we need to do to start out with, we are going to need to take a, not a painted beam, we are going to need to take a one meter wall, put it directly on the peak of the roof. Now this will push the ridge up and it will push it up uniformly. So, and it looks like I actually got one of those a tad too long, so I'll go ahead and cut that back. But it will push it up uniformly. So that will be our guiding position. So now what we're going to do is we are going to take 
a painted beam and we are going to snap this to the center of the top of the wall. Now we need to be in diagonal mode for this. We will pull it down the side of the wall. Now what we're looking for here, and we need to remove these two as well, because otherwise we will have things in the way. So what we're looking for here on a two, uh, two roof, one meter slope, is this 16.12516 centimeters. That gives us the exact same angle as the roof. So we can then repeat this on the opposite side. And as long as we get the same value, we know that we've hit the correct angle. So now at this point, we want to take a concrete pillar and put it onto the end of one of those. We'll take another beam and since we're in diagonal mode, it will go perpendicular to whatever surface it is attaching to. So we attach it to the bottom center corner of the pillar and drag it out and it will drag out parallel to the beam above it. So the length there doesn't really matter. It's just mainly making sure that you get it correct. Then we will delete the top beam, delete the pillar, grab a new pillar, and put it on the end of this beam. So then we want to go a couple more back. We can delete these two and delete this beam. So then we're going to repeat the process over here. Doesn't matter if it's up or down, just so long as it's uh, perpendicular. Again here, we can delete both of these. We can place this in there. Delete those. And surprisingly, we are done now. So now, if we grab these, we will find out that they line up perfectly at the top of the, of the peak. I think that deserves a sip of coffee. So now, with the two meter walls and having this perimeter edge, we actually don't have to worry about lining up the bottom edge because it comes up almost exactly where we need it to be down here. It is close enough that unless you're up here very closely scrutinizing this, you're not going to see it. So yeah, not all that big of a problem. Now, when we get down here to the middle, we will end up with a very slight, very slight gap between. So we'll go ahead and do the other side here. All right, so when we get down here to the middle, we will see there is a very slight gap between these. Now, we can fix that by clipping the pillars backwards, and we would basically just do the, the reverse of what we did on the upper end. But thankfully, with the design that I have here, we don't need to worry about that because we are bringing pillars up from the bottom. So if we grab a painted beam here and hook it into the spot where the pillar is going to go, we can bring it up here and find out this is 18 meters tall to the center. So if we pull this back down to 14 meters, we know that we now have one pillar's height. Now this doesn't perfectly close it up, just like on the corners, we are ever so slightly off. But again, unless you're up on the roof, very carefully scrutinizing this, 
you're never going to see it. Now, of course, we do have a tiny bit of Z fighting that will kind of go away as uh, you get further away from the build. But so, yes, it is kind of a pain. It was very much of a pain to figure out how to get this to work, but I managed to get it. So now we have these really nice uniform borders on the edge of our roof. And I'm assuming that with just a little bit of experimentation, you could probably find what numbers are needed for other angles of roof. And that's why I say I think I may redo this because it doesn't look like it's very level in relation to the roof. So this one over here looks a little bit, no, it looks a little bit off as well. So maybe that is the best that we can do there. I think I only went one meter up on the wall and so it should have matched, but it's probably that I hit something odd when I was doing it. I don't know. But yes, nice borders on the side of the roof. And that also helps another problem that we often see with satisfactory roofs, and that is overhangs. Overhangs on these roofs are difficult to do, but down in the water. But with this, it gives the appearance of an overhang without having to worry about it. So yeah, I've got a lot of little bits here. Uh, also, when we get to these points like this, so if we were to bring this pillar up all the way to the top, it's going to clip way out the top. So if you delete back a couple of these, grab a beam, go up to one, one meter below the cross beam, and then just come down two. Put a pillar underneath it, we'll put one on top, and then we can delete that beam, throw up the extra pillar, it will clip in about to the middle, and it's very nice. So we can look, come back and look at that, and it looks really good. So if we add our, our other trim bits and everything, it will look exactly like this here. So yes, got to go around, get this wall built up on the other side. I did have to kind of toy with this a little bit. You know, I said that we're going to have the support pillars over here. I don't know. It looks really weird if we don't have this completed out to the edge. So I may have to rethink that. I had to rework the windows too. So anyway, look at it. I'm gonna get uh, this last little bit of stuff taken care of here. And that will pretty much finish up the factory build itself. Then we can start getting all of our other little bits put together here and we can start turning this on. Now we're gonna have to turn it on a little at a time. We cannot turn it on all at once because if we try to, I have a feeling horrible things are going to happen. So get this all finished up and I will be back in a little bit. Splush. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So I realized that in order to do what we need to do, we need pipe wall holes. So let's see here, that should actually be under management. So yes, and that's gonna take all of the coupons that we have printed. Now, I am curious to see... Yeah, you. Get out of here. Don't come back. I am curious to see how many coupons we have. Eleven. Not bad. So, yes, it has been taking a little while for me to get all of this stuff taken care of. You just don't learn. Go away! But, uh, yeah, we have our factory complete now. Uh, no, we don't. I forgot the back wall. So, yeah, right now the back wall is not done. Well, it won't take too much. But I did set up a truck station over here 
this will be where the coal for this factory will be dropped off. So we are going to be having a truck driving out to our two pure nodes. And if we need to, we have a lot more coal available around here. So we've got these two normal nodes here. And then we have, I think there's uh, two impure and one normal up here as well. So lots of coal up there. There's also a bunch more coal down here, but I think we will reserve that for other uses later on. But I have been putting in pumps. So I have nine new pumps set up here and ready to go. So we've got four on this side five on the other. The only reason that I've only got four on this side and why that pipe looks so ugly is because I just can't quite get them to fit. But so if we grab a pipe here, we have what we need to be able to get up here. And I think, yeah, we'll just have the noodle pipes for this section. I think that will look decent. Um, can we crawl up here? At least, no. There we go. So we'll go ahead and hook that up. Color these blue. Because I mean, after all, it is water. But now what we're going to need to do is run those into the side of the factory here, into the power plant. So we now have our new pipe wall holes. So I believe this is the appropriate height for that. Now question, we need them over there, but we have a window there. Well, we should be able to do I think what we'll do is we'll put, you know what, we will do all of them inside. So we'll go in a nice tight four pattern here and then grab our pipe. And here we are going to swap to, whoop, I am hitting the wrong button. If we go to horizontal to vertical, that's not gonna do it. So what we really need to do is bring over a, support and we need to go okay right there one two and that should connect those two and then if we come too forward from that too forward yeah that should properly align the second half So this time to make life a little easier, we'll do the top first. So this will make nice clean pipe turns into the building. And then we will remove these pipe supports because yeah, they don't look real good here. So that will pump the water into the building. Should be pretty nice. So the next thing that I need to do is to get the uh, piping hooked up inside. Now, one of the things that I think we may need to do here is employ some extra pumps to ensure proper pressurization of this water. I don't know for sure. I don't think that we are going above the 10 meter lift height that these pumps will do. But at the same time, I don't want to be lacking in power because of a, an attempted shortcut. So I don't know. I got to think about this because I mean, we are eight meters of wall. I think we do need to pump this. So what we're going to want to do, we're gonna to wanna to get our junctions. Can we put, nope, we can't put those directly on there. So we're gonna to have to bring a pipe down. And I think the best thing to do here to make sure that we get a nice straight connection here would be to stand directly underneath and place one. 
And then we can connect our pipe between it. Then put on a junction and I suppose we'll go oh right about there. Nice part is is all of those should connect back together later. Then we can reattach our pipe here. And actually one little click did that. So now if we repeat that process down the length of the building we should be fine. We should be able to get the appropriate as long as we hit the right spot. We should be able to get the appropriate uh, layout here. Do a couple more just to make sure. Conveyor belts of course are going to be really easy. So if we put these in here, grab our junction, hold shift or control, whatever you're using. And in all actually, okay, I see. It splits the pipe in half. I forget about that. So now we can run this along here. Now for the pumping portion of this, I think what we'll do, we'll run that. It's going to be at a very slight angle. If we put a pump in here and, okay, we need to make sure that we're pumping in the right direction. Put it right in the center of that chunk of pipe. Oh, interesting. I did not know that we could rotate those. I think we will keep it. How about if we go like that? Just because, just because I want to. So we'll hook power up to that. We will hook the power that I have running to these guys up. And what we'll do is we will have our uh, pumps start pumping before we start working on any of the other stuff. So let's see here, where do we want our power here? Let's bring it right there on the corner of the building. We will be bringing some major bus lines for power out of this. But, uh, yeah, I think we're going to have to probably finish this in the next episode. So I'm going to say thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to give a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any thoughts about what I've been working on, anything that might help me out here, efficiency, whatever, go ahead and leave that down in the comments, and I will see you next time. Bye.